Hi, I'm Marlon Walker, and I'm live from Pelham's Wasteland, and today I've got a new episode of March Character Creation Mayhem for you guys. Today, we are going to be creating a character for Warlock. Um, Warlock is a game by Fire Ruby Designs, um, and it's a really interesting beast. It is a... Um, custom system but that is designed to harken back to old school gaming but not all old school gaming specifically to the early days of um british fantasy rpgs which is kind of an interesting thing because of course um i think especially for those of us who are americans uh, the the kind of um old school uh sort of dominated by especially um dungeons and dragons right from tsr and then some of the kind of other th you know rune quest is in there and some some of the other games like that um but that this game is specifically designed to um take inspiration from the sort of british osr for lack of a better term which there's this kind of an interesting um there was a, a podcast for a time with a couple of guys who talked about some of that sort of stuff um purple worm that is is no longer active um but that i listened to for um some time that i thought was quite interesting um particularly because there's some so there's some kind of dungeons and dragons stuff that was um written by like tsr uk like i think the fiend folio for either first or second edition of AD&D. I don't remember which one. But then also there's like fighting fantasy and advanced fighting fantasy. Um, and then there's obviously stuff like um, the Warhammer fantasy RPG stuff from Games Workshop and then eventually from other people and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, Warlock is sort of designed to capture um, that sort of stuff in a lot of ways, which is really interesting. Um, it's also really cool, in my opinion, um, there are a ton of supplemental books for Warlock, essentially. Um, shorter PDFs that are available that add stuff to the game. Um, you don't need any of that to play by any means, which is one of the nice things that you really only need the core book, of which there are right now two versions, actually. Um, and my understanding is that they are mostly the same. Um, I think some of the text has been rewritten for the new version, but that a lot of it has to do with kind of layout improvements and, and kind of, um, trying to make the text more, more readable and more usable and bring it up to the standard of some of the kind of later releases. But that's the, um, Traders edition, which is what I'm going to be using. That's the PDF that I've got open on the second monitor to build the character. But the, the mechanics apparently are, are still all the same and they, they, when Fire Ruby released the Traders Edition um, in their the, the the release information, they basically said, "Yeah, the mechanics are all still the same. If you have the original, you can totally use that with any of the new stuff. But if you want to get the new one, obviously, this is a, a way to uh, both support the company and also um, experience the new content. So that's pretty cool." Um, the system is neat because one of the kind of cool elements of it, um, so task resolution uses D20s. Um, and what you do is you roll a D20 plus your relevant skill modifier um, and try to get a 20 or higher. So having a higher skill is better. Um, but skills do not get that high that quickly. So it can take a little while to get particularly capable. Um, and then opposed checks are a little different because it's two characters will roll a d20 plus their skill. Um, and then sometimes there will be modifiers based on who is the kind of active character. That's how they handle um, combat. Because one of the, the really cool things is that in melee combat, um, getting into melee combat is a dangerous thing, right? As a, as a sort of... Um, there, there's a, an element of, of realism there, obviously, that, you know, getting into melee combat is dangerous, right? When you're close enough to hit somebody with your sword, it's probably close enough for them to hit you with their sword, right? That sort of thing. Um, so what they do is that it's imposed test, but the uh, whoever's turn it is, whoever has initiative gets a bonus to their role. So they have better odds of 
winning the opposed contest, but whoever wins the opposed contest is the one who does damage with their weapon in melee combat, um, which is cool. It's a little bit like um, the way that uh, another game that I really like works, which is Jackals. Jackals does something kind of similar with um, opposed combat checks, and whoever wins is the one who does damage, That um, which is kind of a cool way to um, make capable characters both player characters and npcs um feel so capable right that you have these uh characters that are are able to uh dish out some serious damage even when it's not their turn that sort of thing this is a really cool thing but i am i am totally rambling at this point so let's go to the roll 20 and take a look at the game um this is the warlock character sheet which i think is fairly new because i remember checking um, fairly recently and not seeing a warlock character sheet although it could be that I just missed it because I didn't pay close enough attention that's entirely possible knowing me um, so um, but you can see a lot of the stuff so we have name community career past careers um, stamina and luck um, which are similar to how um, what you call it kind of fighting fantasy or advanced fighting fantasy does those sorts of things they have all of these different skills we'll also get some career skills that are basically the way career skills work is that they are an average of a couple of our main adventuring skills but they represent kind of a more sort of specialized use of some of those things um, and then we'll have weapons and spells and some items and some different effects and things like that um, so yeah, all sorts of stuff that we can end up filling out. So let's get into it. Um, character creation is pretty quick. What we are going to do is, um, and, and one of the other things that I didn't mention is that there's a really interesting implied setting in the book, but the core book doesn't have a lot of information about the kingdom, which is the, the implied setting, which definitely has um, some inspiration from things like um, the Empire in Warhammer Fantasy and things like that. But it also is sort of its own thing in some clever ways. Um, and there's some really cool kind of bits and pieces. And one of the things that they have done is they've sort of expanded the known world with all these different books, right? So there's a kingdom source book, but then there's some interesting source books that talk about kind of some of the, the sort of stuff in the outer edges of the kingdom and, and kind of beyond the kingdom and all that sort of stuff, which is really cool. Um, but all of that is to say that you don't need any of that necessarily. And you can totally, you know, make the setting your own if you want to, but there is definitely an implied setting that um, characters are going to start as not super, um, not superhuman, definitely. So stamina, we are going to slash R 2D six plus 12. That's not great, but that's okay. That is do, do, do. stamina base is uh, six plus in to career. Oh, that's just the, the regular base. 18 is our base stamina, and we have start off with full stamina. And then luck is slash R, 1d6 plus 7. A 10. Again, not so good, but okay. Not horrible. Not horrible by any means. Um, and then we need to decide on a community. Um, there aren't any mechanical differences between communities which is what they use for what other games would call races um, but you can play a human an elf a dwarf or a halfling um, but there aren't any mechanics for them which i think is an interesting thing it's just sort of flavor um, and then the expectation is that the game master can sort of say okay well because you're you're a halfling and you're small you get a bonus on this rule to be sneaky things like that um, but i think it's kind of an interesting interesting system there that it's not um it's more more about kind of like the sort of flavor of where you grew up. We are just going to be a human because uh, humans in regular um, fantasy games are not chosen often enough. 
So what we are going to do is we assign some points to skills before we get a career. And we should actually, I think we did that. We're supposed to have done that before. Um, 10 skills on the sheet you can mark as level six. These are where the character has the most natural ability. 10 more making that level five and the rest start at level four. So what are we going to, basically we can, and we've got this nice tracker here for this sort of stuff. So let's up streetwise, stealth, spot, small blade, persuasion, bargain, disguise, dodge, maybe intimidate, that sounds good. Um, lie, yeah. So clearly we're going for a sort of roguish character here, um, getting a lot of these kind of roguey skills. And then let's do, let's get some of the other stuff up. Sleight of hand, survival, navigation, medicine, large blade, praise athletics, brawling, crossbow, diplomacy. That's everything. Okay, I guess we could take something down a little bit more if we want to. But um, yeah, we might take uh, we might take diplomacy down and do endurance up. Mm. All right. Um, now, please select a community and career. We are going to be human. And we are going to roll for, ooh, that's cool. Toggle advanced careers. Nice. Very, very functional sheet. Some really cool functionality built into this one, which I really like as someone who does not know how to do a lot of that sort of stuff. I really appreciate people who do know how to do that sort of stuff. So what you do, you're a 46 and there are basically four different d6 charts and you get to choose which of the four careers you end up with you would like so our first career is agitator our second career is initiate our third career is minor and our last one is wizard's apprentice Ooh, wizard's apprentice that sounds i, do, I wasn't planning on that but that sounds wicked right let's be a wizard's apprentice I think that Wizard's Apprentice might be the only real caster on this entire list. Um, let me look through and see, but I think you I think you have to roll a six on your last D6 to get, you obviously have to roll a six on your last D6 to get Wizard's Apprentice. And um, I think that's the only real caster um, uh, career by default. Yeah, it looks like it. I guess the, the initiate might, I don't remember if there's um, clerical magic. I don't think there really is, but um, yeah. Wizard's Apprentice. So skills we get, um, yeah, we've selected a community and a career and we need to do, so we get command, we get uh, persuasion, we get history, we get language, and we get incantation as our career stuff. And we get some, uh, da, da, da. let's see if we can turn off the, um, is there a way to turn off this little bit? I don't know. It had an option earlier, but let me see if I can. Hmm. I don't know. It doesn't seem to be able to turn this off. Maybe I'll have to go into the settings and see what. It's probably somewhere under attributes and abilities. Do, do, do. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to worry about it right now. We'll see. Um all right. What do we need? We need 2d6 for some background stuff. So we got a 6 and 6. So from the passes of the rag top 
mountains, as well as clear nothing so far. All right, and then we need to put some points into some of these skills. So we are going to, you can put, what, 10 points across all of these skills based on your career. Mm -hmm. List of skills, maximum values, tick the boxes, on your character sheet for the two different skill levels. When you create your character, you can assign 10 levels to those skills listed in your starting career. So we are going to go back to Wizard's Apprentice. Let's see, let's do a couple points in Persuasion, a couple in History. Let's do some one, two, three, four in Incantation. Yeah, I know it's max of six right now, but that's, um, it's actually a max of 12. And history is a max of 12. And persuasion is a max of 10. And command is a max of 10. And language is a max of 12. Okay, we've spent eight points, so let's put two more into language. Yeah, so that's that stuff. Cool, cool. Um, what else do we get? Uh, let's go back through the book and see 10 levels. We also gain a career skill at a level equal to the lowest value of the five skills. Oh, it's the lowest one. Well, we might not want to, maybe we should put something into command then to boost. Let's subtract from persuasion and boost command one. And maybe, hmm, we had already had persuasion pretty good. So let's boost command to six, so that we at least have a six in our career skill. Wizard's Apprentice at level six is a skill. D20 plus six, yeah. Okay, um, and then what else do we need? Um, <laughs> We have become a wizard's apprentice. We all will need a couple of traits. We can choose three. So we will be proud because what wizard's apprentice isn't proud. We will be sly and we will be <laughs> moody our three traits um, and then we also get some other stuff equipment um, coins come in three types pennies silver and gold and they're just 10 to 10 to 10 um, start out with silver How much silver do we start out with? Do we roll somewhere? Let me check, let me check. Careers and skills, adventuring skills, basic equipment. 2d6 silver coins. 2d6. 10 silver, nice. 10 silver. And we also have a backpack. And D3 days food slash R1 D3. Three days. Days rations. And we have water skin. And a simple knife and we have clothes and boots that's our stuff so i think it's all equipped right i don't remember how i think there's a, a rule about how many items you can carry but i don't remember um do 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 and then what else might we need we don't get any equipment <coughs> for our career it looks like oh, we do get some for being a wizard's apprentice so we have a cloak 
with magic symbols. We have um, staff. We have books. We have herbs and magical yugas. And we have one. Oh, I guess a spell doesn't go here, probably. It probably goes under spells. Um, spell name, spell. I guess we are going to have to figure out what spell we have. Uh, and then we are probably going to see if we can get any things that might be useful. Um, hmm. <laughs> Metal hand weapon for 2d6 silver. We might want to get that because I don't think we want to. Uh, let's roll and see if we can get a metal hand weapon based on how much it. Oh, it's going to cost all of our money for one of poor quality. I guess we're going to stick with the staff. which we have basically no points in because it's going to use blunt, I think. So that's fun. Um, but that's okay. Um, and let's see if there's a list of weapons and stuff. Um, doo -doo -doo. Staff is a casual and it does 1d6 crushing. Staff crushing uses the blunt skill. Um, crushing is not range, it is casual, and it's, it's, I told you to take the wizard's staff. That's, uh, worm tongue in, uh, the two towers, because they let Gandalf have his staff. Um, spell, we need to pick a spell. Is there a way to roll for a spell, or is it just... Gain any of these as their starting spell rolling randomly. I thought we got to choose, but let's roll. So let's roll our 2d6. A 3 and a 1. A feather. What does feather do? Feather. It's Oh, it's feather fall. Fun. Let's roll one more time to see what else we could get. Because I think I'm going to say that since it said we could choose, that we're going to roll a couple times. Unlock. That sounds dope for a sort of sneaky rogue type. Unlock. Spell will unlock any door or padlock as if the key were used. The lock will grow, glow with an eldritch light for the next three hours. It will be obvious that it has been tampered with. All right. Unlock has a cost of one, two, three. It's effect mods. Um, do, do, do. It's going to be a duration of three hours. Lock is unlocked, but glows with an eerie light. Um, and then let's see, does that do? Is it? Yeah, and it says it all of that. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so then do we need anything? I think that is basically everything we don't have. We, we decided not to buy any weapons. I'm going to assume that we can't wear armor while casting because that seems like the sort of thing that um, casting spells in combat, fighting and keeping spells, magic. Stamina cost. So why is it stamina cost? Rolls a one. Finding and keeping. I don't see anything about not wearing armor while casting. In which case we might want to do. <laughs> So 
So maybe we should try to buy some armor. I'm just thinking. Magical items. Let's see if we can find what some sort of armor might cost. Uh, chain mail. It's like 2d6 gold. We're not going to be able to afford that. What about is there like leather armor maybe? Well-made clothing, thieves tools, caltrops, crossbow. Actually, a crossbow might be useful to get um, since we have some skill with crossbow and we're not going to want to necessarily get in close without any good armor. Um, ammo, mountain uh, climbing gear, crowbar, flint and steel, grappling leather helmet. Leather helmet is there. Let me go to the combat section and see... Armor, light armor, reduces by 1d3, modest by 1d6, and heavy by 2d6. Light armor, so I think we will be able to buy, let's say for 1d6 silver, we'll be able to buy some light armor, slash or 1d6. Apparently, we're buying the expensive light armor. Um, light leather armor. And that's equipped. And do we go into here to um, ballot item carriers? Oh, okay. Armor light. Whoa, that is cool. And look at the examples, extremely big magic sword. That sounds dope. Um, all right, so our light armor. Yeah, light leather armor gives us a 1d3. Excellent, excellent. Um, and then I think we are just about done with this character. Um, I don't know how much spell stuff is gonna, oh, crossbow. Let's see if we can afford it, because it's a, a 1d6. Nope, we cannot even afford a crossbow, because we only have 10 silver, and that crossbow that we found is going to cost 6 silver. Um, so yeah, that's the end of, oh, we should have a name for this character, surely. Surely we should have a name, and it should be some ridiculous wizard name. Um, it's not going to be, uh, you know, what, what could be a ridiculous wizard name? Um, something that sounds uh, surely an assumed name, right? A wizard should have, like, you know, maybe they didn't grow up, their parents didn't name them a ridiculous wizard name, but that they, when they became a wizard, they assumed their ridiculous wizard name. Um, something like a Roman emperor or something. Let's call... Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, I switched over. I accidentally loaded up OBS. I, I had an OBS as the active window and therefore switched to the wrong scene. Sorry about that. Um, Aurelian Mighty is our wizard. He's called Aurelian the Mighty, which is totally ridiculous right now because his best skill is a d8 is an eight incantation um so he can't even cast spells that consistently but you know that's his thing he's aurelian the mighty and he is is super mighty and all that sort of stuff anyway um yeah that is warlock that's the whole thing that's uh the game obviously could have gone much faster if i were more familiar with um the game in particular if you i think if you uh had a, a games master who was kind of leading the group through character creation pretty quickly. You could you could definitely create characters pretty quickly for this. And like I said, there's a really interesting implied setting in the book. All of the different kind of careers that have that kind of late medieval, perhaps early Renaissance even um, feel, but in this kind of grim dark way and all that sort of stuff that is is so much fun from some of the other games that I happen to like. So. Anyway, that's Warlock, Fire Ruby Designs. Um, like I said, I used the Traders Edition for character creation. I think that the Traders Edition and the original core book are the same price. Um, that's part of what I remember, that you might as well get the new one. Um, 
but I don't remember that for certain. If you have already gotten the original one, then you don't necessarily need the Trader's Edition. Um, but if you are going to just sort of hop into this game, you can um, totally do the, the Trader's Edition and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, that's uh, that's Warlock. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. hope you guys are continuing to enjoy March Character Creation Mayhem and all the different games that we are looking at. I've been Arlen Walker, I've been live from Helen's Wasteland, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.